In the 1970s, concerns over the quantity of information collected about individuals by the U.S. government received a lot of public attention. Congress believed it was important to stop unwarranted collection of personal information by the government and to properly protect the personal information that is collected. As a result, the Privacy Act of 1974 was enacted. The Privacy Act has four basic objectives. To restrict disclosure of personally identifiable information, or PII. To grant individuals access to records maintained on themselves. To grant individuals the right to correct records that are not accurate, relevant, timely, or complete. And to establish a code of fair information practices to regulate the collection, maintenance, use, and dissemination of PII on individuals. In other words, as an individual, you have rights. You have the right to know what information is collected about you, how it will be used, and by whom, to have it corrected if it is wrong, and to have it protected from unauthorized disclosure to others. As Department of the Navy military, civilian, and contractor personnel, you also have responsibilities. To only collect and maintain PII about individuals when authorized to do so, to only collect the information that is necessary, to inform individuals of the authority to collect their information, the principal purpose or use for the collection, to whom it will be disclosed, and the effects on the individual for refusing to provide the information. This is accomplished by providing a Privacy Act statement to the individual at the time of collection. You are also responsible for ensuring that the information maintained is accurate, relevant, timely, and complete. Ensuring that PII collected and maintained by the Department of the Navy is kept confidential and is protected against misuse. And for knowing what to do if you suspect misuse or if there is a potential or actual compromise of PII. The Department of Defense and the Secretary of the Navy have issued guidance to clarify these rights and responsibilities and to establish privacy programs to ensure that all of the requirements are met. The Department of the Navy Privacy Program affirms that it is the Department's policy that an individual's privacy is a personal and fundamental right that should be respected and protected. Further, Department of the Navy personnel, including contractors, have a responsibility to protect an individual's privacy when collecting, maintaining, using, or disseminating PII about an individual. Failure to properly safeguard PII may result in criminal or civil penalties. Dramatic changes in information technology have taken place over the past few decades. The digital landscape has evolved and grown well beyond what was considered when the Privacy Act was enacted. Advances in IT capabilities make it possible to generate and maintain significantly greater quantities and increasingly diverse and sensitive types of information. PII may include unique identifiers such as name, date of birth, social security number, Department of Defense ID number, Department of Defense benefits number, geographic location information, and biometrics. In today's data-driven world, it is necessary for the Navy and Marine Corps to collect, maintain, and use unprecedented volumes of PII. However, there are risks associated with maintaining this information. The evolution of the digital landscape, giving us easier access to a greater volume of information, increases the risk of unauthorized access to, unauthorized disclosure or use of, and loss of PII, also known as a breach. This requires the Department of the Navy to take new and more aggressive approaches to both preventing and responding to breaches of PII. Several federal agencies have experienced high-profile breaches affecting thousands of employees. One of the most notable breaches occurred in June 2015. The Office of Personnel Management discovered that the background investigation records of current, former, and prospective federal employees and contractors had been stolen. The Office of Personnel Management and the Interagency Incident Response Team have concluded with high confidence that sensitive information, including the Social Security numbers of 21.5 million individuals, was stolen from the background investigation databases. To adequately protect PII, you must first understand what PII is. 
The term PII refers to any information about an individual, including but not limited to education, financial transactions, medical history, criminal or employment history, and information that can be used to distinguish or trace an individual's identity, such as name, social security number, either full or truncated, date and place of birth, mother's maiden name, address, phone number, biometric information, or any other personal information that can be linked to an individual. This information needs to be protected because, if compromised, an individual may be put at risk. The compromise of PII could result in embarrassment, inconvenience, reputational harm, financial harm, lower morale, an increased risk to personal security and identity theft. Identity theft is a significant problem in the United States. Identity thefts represent 16 percent, or 490,220, of the over 3 million complaints received by the Federal Trade Commission in 2015. And in 2014, 17.6 million individuals, or 7 percent of all U.S. residents aged 16 or older, were victims of one or more incidents of identity theft. Perhaps more alarming is that the risk of harm to individuals in today's data-driven economy goes well beyond financial identity theft. Today, malicious actors use stolen PII to create driver's licenses, passports, health insurance identification cards, permanent resident cards, and other high-quality identity document forgeries that may then be used to obtain prescription drugs, receive medical treatment, travel internationally, obtain a job, claim benefits such as unemployment, file false tax returns to claim a refund, obtain authentic government credentials, and aid in criminal activities. Additionally, identity theft can result in embarrassment, inconvenience, financial loss, reputational harm, unfairness, and in rare cases, risk to personal safety. There are many ways that a breach can occur. A breach may occur as a result of human error, intentional unauthorized disclosure by employees with access to information, or theft by external attackers. Most occurrences result from human error. Knowing what the risks are and following guidelines and procedures to protect against those risks is essential to reducing the number of breaches and the harm they may cause. One of the more common risks that we face is called phishing. Phishing is a criminal activity in which an adversary attempts to fraudulently acquire sensitive information by impersonating a trustworthy person or organization. Examples of phishing include manipulated emails that appear to be from government agencies, financial institutions, credit card companies, and other recognizable contacts. The ultimate goal of phishing is to obtain personal information which can then be used to gain access to or create new accounts. Here is a scenario for you to consider. In this scenario, you will be asked to respond to various email messages. How would you respond to this message? Correct. This is a phishing attempt. Requests to verify your account, password, or provide PII are red flags which should alert you to these scams. You should never answer any email that attempts to collect PII and other critical information unless the email has been authenticated. Legitimate financial institutions will never ask for this information via email. When you receive a suspicious email, do not respond to it or forward it to other users. Do not open attachments and do not click on any links provided in the email. Learn to recognize red flags, such as unknown sender, misspelled words and poor grammar, urgent sensational subject lines, promises of financial gain, gifts or prizes, Request to verify your password or account.
Does this represent a PII breach? Correct. Commander Smith sent an unencrypted email containing PII to you and other employees, many of whom did not have a need to know. A breach is the loss of control, compromise, unauthorized disclosure, unauthorized acquisition, unauthorized access, or any similar occurrence where a person other than an authorized user accesses or has the ability to access personally identifiable information or a person accesses personally identifiable information for another than authorized purpose. Regardless of whether the information was encrypted or not, individuals who do not need to use the PII in the performance of their official duties should never have access to someone else's PII. What action should you take first? Right. Within one hour of the discovery of a loss or suspected loss of PII, notify your supervisor or privacy official who will initiate the PII breach reporting process. What should Commander Smith have done to prevent this PII breach? Correct. Commander Smith should always send PII in a digitally signed and encrypted email and should never send PII to recipients that do not need to know the information for the performance of their official duties. What action should you take first? Yes. It is always a good idea to verify any form you are asked to complete. You should ensure you have the most recent version of any official form before providing your PII. Remember to encrypt and digitally sign all emails containing PII. After completing the form, you are ready to reply to the HR representative and provide them with the requested information, including your PII. Please select all proper controls for sending PII. Correct. All controls mentioned must be in place before sending PII via email. Good morning. I need your help today to complete a privacy compliance spot check. We will be inspecting the office shared drives as well as the physical office space. Let's get started. Recent PII breach reports highlight the need to conduct searches of shared drives throughout the department to protect employees' PII and reduce the risk of identity theft. PII is found most often in documents related to awards, employment information, performance evaluations, legal documents, medical records, and financial data. The scanning software we use detected files that contain PII on an unprotected folder. You are right. All of the controls you selected must be in place before storing PII on a shared drive. If you ever discover files containing PII, and you are not in a position with an official need to know, you should report this to your privacy official immediately. Ensure shared drive access permissions are established and routinely checked. Shared drives are useful tools to store and share information, but they must be properly managed to ensure personnel understand that indiscriminate posting of PII is not authorized.
When there is a need to post PII to a shared drive, access to those files must be strictly controlled and routinely monitored for compliance. Problems often occur when network maintenance causes the removal of access controls. Great work with the spot check of our shared drive. Now we need to look around the office to identify where our personnel are mishandling PII. Great work. Mary from Human Resources has left a printed form containing PII in plain view. Leaving a document containing PII in an open area is a breach. When hand-carrying documents containing PII, it is a best practice to use a privacy cover sheet. Sharp Eye. You've spotted the fax machine. Faxing is one of the least secure means of transmitting information. It often results in the disclosure of PII to personnel who do not have an official need to know. The use of fax machines to send information containing social security number and other PII to Department of the Navy personnel is prohibited except under the following circumstances. When another more secure means of transmitting PII is not practical. When a process outside of Department of the Navy control requires faxing to activities such as the Defense Finance and Accounting Service, TRICARE, Defense Manpower Data Center, etc. In cases where operational necessity requires it, when faxing PII related to internal government operations only, such as office phone number, rank, job title, etc., also called Rolodex PII. Aha! You have discovered a printed document containing PII placed erroneously in a recycling bin. Whenever disposing of PII, always use a burn bag or an approved shredder. Never use a trash can, recycling bin, or dumpster. This type of breach is referred to as improper disclosure. Both accidental and improper disclosure of PII can result in legal action or other discipline. You should report this conversation to your supervisor or privacy official. Good catch! You have discovered a recall roster containing social security numbers posted in an open area. When creating and sharing a roster of any kind, social, recall, etc. Wherever the roster is posted or stored, only those with a need to know should have access. Is the information appropriately marked for official use only, privacy sensitive? Limit the collection of PII to the minimum number of elements required to get the job done. Social security numbers, full or truncated, should never be included. Provide a Privacy Act statement any time PII is solicited from an individual, whether in writing or electronically. Contact your privacy official for more information. Great job! Thanks for helping me complete our Privacy Compliance Spot Check. Congratulations! You have completed the annual Department of the Navy Privacy and Personally Identifiable Information Awareness Training.